All right, so welcome back to Photoshop. So I grabbed this image off Pixabay for a specific reason. When you're doing portraits, you don't really want horizon lines going through your head. So we have these sort of dark rocks or something in the background that's very distracting because this is so much darker than everything else. It really creates this line in the background. So I'm gonna hit Command J on a Mac, Control J on a PC to duplicate the background layer. And what I'm going to do is just go ahead and try this for a second. I'm going to actually just actually instead of clone stamp, I think we will use um, just this healing brush. So I'm going to make the healing brush about the size of the rocks. We're just going to go over. All right. It's all right if it doesn't get it perfect because we're going to end up blurring that. Now that one doesn't look good. We're going to go this way. Yeah, it's doing weird things. So. <clears throat> Uh, second option is I'm going to duplicate that layer and I'm actually going to lower the contrast and so I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to go up with that contrast and we're just going to flatten out those little areas so as you can see here it's all white so it's applying to everything and we don't want that so I'm going to hit command I to get rid of that and then I'm just going to take my brush with white so grab the brush, 100% basically white, and adjust that brush size, and we're just gonna paint over that area. It's a little bit too big of a brush. Just wanna go over those rocks basically, whatever that is. I just wanna lower the contrast of that area. Now, you can kind of see it. Uh, I'm not trying to get it perfect. Uh, we're gonna end up blurring this all out, so you're not gonna see these little lines of where this is happening. So that looks a lot better. We've lowered that contrast back there is to where it is. Now, if I want to come in here, I can always hit X and I can just go in and, and paint back in and try to really adjust or make that more accurate. But I'm not too worried about that. So I'm going to actually take these two layers and select them together. So we're going to take the top layer and the bottom layer, hit Command E, and that's just going to compress that because I don't want that extra layer in this. So the next thing we need to do is make a selection. So we're going to go ahead and grab the quick selection tool. I'm just going to simply select out this girl. All right, hold down minus here. Uh, I got to wait for that to go away. Start down here. Move that out of the way. All right, that's pretty good. Uh, oh, looks like we missed that. So then we're going to hit select and mask. And the reason here is you're just going to uh, refine this, or in this case, I'm just going to feather this edge a little bit. So it looks a little bit more realistic. And so that's that's good enough. So um, the key here is to output is a new layer with a mask. Very important because we wouldn't be able to blend these two layers together. So um, the issue here is what we're creating is what's called a depth mask for Photoshop. And instead of a normal mask, this mask is really just kind of telling uh, the, the lens blur where to apply it or not to apply it. So just like anything, um, and you can do this either way because there's an invert in lens blur. But uh, if you think of white is where it's going to apply and black is where it's not going to apply. So uh, we're backwards. So I'm going to hit command I to flip this mask. So we're good. So the issue here is I've selected her out. But if you notice here, this part, this plane or this area all the way across is in focus as well. So we need to add to that. So the way we're going to add is go ahead and grab our brush and uh, we're going to paint black into the mask. So I've got black and I'm just going to lower this a little bit and you'll see why here in a second. And then we're going to increase the size of this and make this a little bit softer. And then I'm just going to go ahead in this area and add to that mask. So if I hold down the Alt Option on a mask and click on it, you can see uh, where we've added to that mask. Now, <clears throat> I want to add more. So we're going to build this up. 
So I want the center to be the strongest. So the, the key here is, and let's turn this back off, we don't want the blur to be abrupt where it just goes super blurry in the back. We want this to slowly gradate towards the background. And here we want to add just a little bit of that blur. So the way we're going to do that is go back into this is to slowly like feather this off in these directions. So for that, I'm really going to lower my flow and opacity and I want my brush to be as soft as possible. We're going to make that bigger. So what I'm going to do is I'm using that to just come in here and really soften that so it it goes out to those edges and blurs everywhere but that gradation is very soft and so you can constantly come over here i don't want that this side doesn't need to be as soft so i want this to transition per se out a little quicker i'm going to make this harder and i'm kind of doing this as quick as i can so this gray is going to obviously the density of the mask is how much it's going to apply. It's going to be 100% here. And let's say that's 50% down there. That's 50%. So we're going to make this bigger again. And we're going to just come in here. And the whole idea is to slowly transition that off. All right. So that's pretty good. I'm not going to sit here and do this forever because it would take too long. So we're going to hit all option and come back. So now we're going to select our image and we're going to go up to filter, blur, lens blur. Now we're not using all the uh, adjustments in this image. So right here is that invert. So if you had your mask backwards and as you can see, we're blurring out that background, which is what we wanted. If we were to click invert, that would flip the mask and notice now we're blurring out our foreground. So blur focal distance kind of allows you to uh, change that transition. So if uh, like whatever is black and then as it goes to white, you can slowly push that back or push that forward. Um, or really the what it's doing is starting to, if as I increase this, it's going to start blurring and eventually it's going to blur the white areas as well as the back areas. But I don't want to do that. So we're just going to leave that at zero, all right? So for usually, unless you're doing something more sophisticated, just leave it at zero. It keeps it simpler. So down here on iris, this is, if you have a bokeh effect and you want to enhance that, um, this is really what lens blur is set up to do. It will allow you to change the uh, sort of, uh, do you want a hexagon, a pentagon, a square, whatever that bokeh kind of circle is in the background. We're not using it, so we're not going to really worry about that. The only thing we're going to be doing here is basically changing the radius, and the radius is how much blur. So as I change this, it is changing the blur, adding more or less blur. So this preview, where it's faster and more accurate, it's just the preview. It's not how it affects the image in the end. So it looks like we've got this thing. bumping around for some reason. So we're going to just click on this and drag it up a little bit. And we'll just assume this is the blur. Now it's not perfect here on the hat, but that's okay. We can get to that in a second. I'm not sure why this is um, it's not, there we go. Looks like it's set. For some reason it was thinking I had the mouse down. I'm not sure the reason why. But all right, so we've got that blur. So we're just going to increase this a little bit more. All right. And it's okay to actually go too strong. And I will show you why. So if you have the choice between not enough and too strong, do too strong. And it will make more sense. So specular highlights. Um, basically, it's going to allow you to blow out your highlights if you want. Uh, we're not going to get into that because we don't have that bokeh effect. So it's not going to make any sense. So uniform or Gaussian, I almost always do Gaussian blur instead of uniform. It just has a better effect. And then we're going to go ahead and hit OK. So one of the issues here is we can see in a few areas that we're getting a little blur on the subject or on the hat. 
we can go in and fix that. Well, why? Because we're using a mask. So that gives us the ability, basically, if we want to turn it on and to turn it off. So what we can do is sort of zoom into this image a little bit and then click on our mask and grab our brush. And we're gonna, I'm gonna bring this back up to basically 100%. And I'm gonna lower my brush, but I'm also gonna make it a little bit harder. Not a lot harder, but a little bit harder. And this will just allow me to get a more accurate selection. So I have black and black is where I want to, remember, hide it or remove it from the image. White is showing it. So I'm going to need to make this a little bit smaller here just to kind of fit that area. And we're not going to sit here and do this perfect. That's okay. So we can see we're blurring our hair a little bit too much. But we're just going to kind of leave that. I would normally go in with flow and just kind of we can come in here and sort of blend that a little bit so it's a better transition. But we're just trying to get these soft, bad areas of the image where it did, I didn't make a perfect selection. And it, truthfully, it's not real that important because you can always go back into a mask and adjust that. So we can see it's still all in focus here, and it's basically gradating out. And we've added just a slight bit of blur here in the foreground as well. So I can turn this on and turn this off. So what we're really doing is just sort of dumbing down the background to make it less apparent so it's just less distractive to the subject and our image. What's great about this is the reason to do this in layers is uh, normally when you apply a blur, it's destructive. It's there. You can't change it. But by using layers, you can also lower the opacity. And by lowering the opacity, you're lowering the effect between the two layers. So Remember when I said if it was a little bit too much, that's okay, because we can just come in here and dial that back a little bit. So it's okay to have too much. Now you can, if you have uh, not enough, then you're going to have to do it over again or duplicate that blur and, and lower that one as well. But so <clears throat> hopefully this makes sense. So we are just applying the blur, and you can do this to any sort of an image. It doesn't have to have a background that's distracting, just some sort of a portrait or image that you want to apply a blur to. So thanks for watching. Leave any comments or questions below. Um, don't forget to subscribe. And hey, if you want to see something specific, let me know. I don't know what people want to watch. So um, leave those in the comments, and I'd be glad to make that video for you.